huh, I can't go to the funeral. I'm going on a trip now. Besides, you haven't done much of wifey duties, and yet you were so selfish. My beloved mother passed away after a long battle with illness, and it was my husband who lectured me not to impose his own common sense on me when I contacted him about the funeral arrangements. It's unbelievable. I don't know anyone more unreasonable who prioritizes a trip over his family's misfortune. Neither I nor the stupid man knew at the time that things would turn out so horribly a few days later. My name's Sally, 32 years old, and I work at my parents' flower shop. Many different people visit the shop, and I feel a sense of fulfillment every day. For example, people who order a bouquet of roses with a slightly embarrassed look on their faces to propose to their lovers. People who come to get gardening advice because it's their hobby. And Linda, a regular customer, was one of them. She was a very bright and talkative person who always made our family laugh. A few years ago, when I was at work, Linda suddenly asked me, Are you dating anyone, Shelly? I was surprised by the sudden question from Linda. But my mother answered right away. I hope she meets someone nice. But Shelly is shy, so... I couldn't help but blush. Although I had some dating experiences, I had never met anyone I could imagine marrying. However, my parents were probably worried about my future as an only child. Meanwhile, Linda, who found out I didn't have a boyfriend, said, Would you like to meet my son? That was how I met my husband, Edward. To be honest, I wasn't very excited at first, but as soon as I met him, my heart started beating. I was drawn to Edward's smiling face, which was like a blooming flower. He talked about his work, his friends, and his hobbies in traveling, and made me laugh a lot. We naturally became a couple and got married two years ago. I'm worried about mom, so is it okay if we live together? My husband, who had been living with Linda at his parents' house, asked me about living together. If Linda, my mother-in-law, had been a difficult person, I might have hesitated, but I liked her and we quickly decided to live together. I'm really happy that Shelly is becoming my daughter-in-law. Don't worry about the housework. Leave it to me. Shelly, just take care of your mother the most. I also felt like crying when Linda became a little tear-eyed. In fact, my mother had been in and out of the hospital after being diagnosed with cancer around that time. Her condition was not good and my father and I were running the store. My mother used to have a good figure, but she had lost a lot of weight since she got sick. I haven't been this skinny in how many years? <laughs> Although my mother was laughing, there were days when she was bedridden all day when her body was not feeling well. For my parents' sake, I did the housework in my parents' home on the second floor between my jobs. Honestly, I was so busy that I couldn't even take care of my in-laws, and I was completely dependent on my mother-in-law. I'm sorry, Linda. I haven't been able to do much for this house. As I bowed my head to my mother-in-law, she smiled and said, What are you saying? Don't worry about us, okay? Previously, my mother-in-law said she regrets not being able to take care of her own parents. She always told me that. I was so grateful for having a mother-in-law like Linda. However, my husband Edward had a completely different attitude. I understand that your family is going through a tough time, but aren't you relying on too much on my mom? You got married, so think about which family should be prioritized. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. 
since it was true that I was relying on my mother-in-law, I couldn't strongly argue back. Moreover, when my husband saw me come back from my parents' house, he said, "Shelley, prepare the dinner. Hurry!" Soon after coming home, my husband began to demand that I do housework. He gave me various orders, but he lay on the sofa, laughing while watching TV. My mother-in-law, who couldn't bear to see this go on, yelled, "Edward, stop it already! Her family is going through a tough time. You know that. And yet, you come home and order her around like a slave. Who do you think you are?" My husband was surprised and taken aback by the anger of my mother-in-law. "What are you talking about? I married because I wanted you to have an easy life. I just thought it was natural for daughter-in-law to prioritize her in-laws." My mother-in-law continued to scold my husband, who kept making excuses. "You're just like your father, with no consideration for others." With his mother's words, my husband sulked and fell silent. My in-laws were divorced, and Edward's father seemed to have been quite a domineering husband. And my mother-in-law had a hard time with him. She laughed and told me that she was the one who asked for a divorce after her grandparents passed away. From that day on, my husband became more subdued, but he didn't like it. When my mother-in-law supported me more than him, and our relationship as a married couple wasn't that great. Meanwhile, my mother's condition worsened and she was hospitalized. The doctor told us that her condition was quite serious, so if there was anyone we wanted to see her, we should call them. When I told my husband and mother-in-law, Linda cried and said, "Shelley." Your mother always listened to my boring stories with a smile. You must feel so lonely and frustrated. I try not to cry too much, but my mother in those words made tears overflow. We embraced each other and cried together. My husband had a look on his face, as if he had been left behind. Three weeks after that, my mother passed away. I had seen her suffer through hospitalizations and painful expressions, but in the end, she passed away as if falling asleep. Mom, you can finally rest now. I'm happy for you. My father and I shed tears while looking at my mother. My husband and mother-in-law had been informed in advance about my mother's critical condition. Please. Spend some time together as a family of three. Don't worry about us. Let us know if there is anything we can do. A few days later, my mother passed away, and I informed Linda about it. And she said, "Let's say goodbye with a smile, okay?" My father and I were truly grateful for her words, but the words that my husband Edward said were unbelievable. Oh, I can't attend the funeral. I'm going on a trip. Besides, you haven't done much of wifey duties, and yet you are so selfish. My husband said that to me in a flat tone on the phone. Wait a minute, what trip? Are you serious here? My mom has been in critical condition. Haven't I told you that in advance? Have I? My husband sighed at my words. Even if you say that, I applied for the trip six months ago, and it's too late to cancel now. Besides, it would be a waste of money. I became emotional at my husband's grumbling. You're saying that you would rather go on the trip than attend my mother's funeral? Think about it for a sec. It's totally inhuman. Shut up. I can't go anyway. Hang it up. My husband hung up the phone after saying that. Neither my mother-in-law nor I had been informed about my husband's travel plans. He probably thought that we would stop him from going if we found out. 
I later learned that he had been secretly packing his bags in his car to avoid suspicion on the day of departure. When I returned to my in-law's house and told my mother-in-law about the situation, her face turned red with anger. Even at the funeral, she continued to apologize to my relatives for her son's unreasonable behavior. Linda, please lift your head up. You did nothing wrong. You have always been kind to me. And my father and I are grateful. My mother also used to say that she was glad to have you as my mother-in-law. My father next to me also spoke to my mother-in-law. Shelly is right. We are truly grateful to you for making time for our family to spend together at the end. My mother-in-law kept crying. In the end, we said goodbye to my mom with a smile. I thought that from now on, I would do my best for my in-law's house, as I had been relying on my mother-in-law so much. However, just three days after my mother passed away, something happened. As soon as I returned home from my parents' house to my in-law's house, I noticed that something was wrong. It was already dark, but there was no light in the house, and it was quiet inside. When I entered the living room, I was surprised and let out a loud voice. Linda! Linda! I found my mother-in-law on the floor. Her body had already became cold. I panicked, but immediately called an ambulance. However, shortly after arriving at the hospital, the doctor told me that my mother-in-law had passed away. The cause of death was a heart attack. It was a sudden and unbelievable reality. I contacted my father and tried to call my husband, but couldn't get through. It wasn't until two days after my mother-in-law's death that I was able to reach my husband. Shelly, I'm sorry about your mom's funeral. Well, I'm tired. So, I want to rest at home soon. Are you resting too now? The funeral is over. He continued with a smirk, and I told him, We're about to attend the funeral. Huh? It's been about five days since your mother passed away, right? Hearing my husband's thoughtless words, I became emotional. It's your mother's. Linda's funeral. She had a heart attack two days ago and passed away while you were enjoying your trip like an idiot. In a raised voice, I hung up the phone and sent the address of the funeral home to my husband's smartphone. The master of the ceremony was my mother-in-law's brother, my uncle. My husband arrived after the funeral was over. M Mom! Everyone looked at my husband with cold eyes as he arrived in a panic. He was wearing a brightly colored sweatshirt in stark contrast to a black funeral attire. My uncle berated him for his inappropriate attire. Edward, why did you bother coming now? Shelly and Linda had told me everything. Do you even realize how stupid you were? My husband's face turned pale as my uncle raged on. Edward, did you enjoy your trip? Shelly had to work a new place, even though she just lost her mother's. My husband responded defensively to my father. Why didn't you tell me about something so important? What are you talking about? I called you multiple times. You even turned off your phone, didn't you? Your boss and colleagues even came to my mother's wake. It turned out that my husband had told his company that he was going on a family trip. His insensitive actions and words made me feel really pathetic. Of course, my husband's colleagues and bosses came to Linda's wake as well. He fell to his knees and started crying loudly, but no one comforted him. Then I approached him with a certain determination. By the way, you know what I want the most right now. I want a divorce from you. I glared at him 
as he begged and cried. Why? Why divorce? I'll work hard. Without you, Shelly, I... Yeah, right. Without me, there won't be anyone to take care of your daily life, right? Wait, are you kidding me? I refuse to live a life like that. I don't need you in my life. After I coldly and calmly said that, my husband didn't say anything back. After a while, our divorce was finalized, with my father accompanying me during the discussion. In the end, my husband completely turned around and said to me, You will regret leaving me. I'm going to be rich. I felt nothing but disgust towards my ex-husband, who spoke as if he was taunting us. The husband who used to have a smile as beautiful as blooming flowers was no longer there. Moreover, to my surprise, he had quit his job. Or rather, he had no choice but to quit. After that incident, when he went to work, he received harsh, icy stares from his boss and colleagues. Unable to bear it, he apparently quit his job, using a resignation agency a few days later. When I heard about it, I was disgusted by his dishonesty. I couldn't help but feel ashamed that he had once been my husband. Breaking up with him was truly the best decision. Several weeks after the divorce was finalized, my ex-husband ran into the store with a pale face and pleaded. Shelly, please help me. This can't be happening. As it turned out, on the day my mother passed away, my late mother-in-law Linda had taken a certain action. She had changed the beneficiary of her life insurance to me with the intention of cutting ties with Edward. My ex-husband, who planned to support himself with the life insurance for the time being, was quite panicked after finding out about this. Yet, he thought he could manage somehow, as he still had the house. But the house had originally belonged to his uncle. Having lost his job and his house, my ex-husband boldly asked me for help. Hey, help me out, Shelly. Can you let me stay in this house for a while? This is all because you took the money that I was supposed to receive. You should take the responsibility and support me. I retorted to my incoherent ex-husband with those words. I am deeply grateful for all the help your mother had given to me. But I have no gratitude towards you. Then my ex-husband turned bright red and tried to grab me. Edward, stop it already. Don't come any closer to my daughter. My father immediately appeared from the back of the store and pulled my ex-husband away. Then we heard the sound of a police car stopping in front of the store. My daughter's ex-husband is stalking her. Please, take this guy away, quickly. My father had reported Edward to the police as soon as he saw him. My agitated ex-husband's elbow hit the police officer's cheek and he was taken away in. After that, my ex-husband's life followed a downward spiral. He apparently asked his relatives for help, but was rejected by all of them. It was a case of reaping what he sowed. I also issued a restraining order against him. Since that day, he hasn't appeared in front of me again. And then, I rented the empty store next to the shop and started a flower arrangement class. At first, most of the students were regular customers. But now, we have new students joining us and we are enjoying it. My father was depressed for a while but gradually regained his spirits and worked hard. My mother and mother-in-law Linda loved this shop and I want to continue to protect it with my father. My name is Madison. I'm 39 years old. I recently got an electric blanket to save on electricity bills. It's making it harder for me to get out of my bed in the morning. The other day, I wasn't planning on snoozing, 
but I fell back asleep and was almost late for work. Beware of electric blankets. What? I'm just being spoiled? I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, I want to tell you about when I was married to a spoiled brat. I'm sure you will all be annoyed with him too. It was 10 years ago. I had just gotten engaged to Daniel, a man I met on a dating app. To be frank, I was getting impatient seeing my friends get married one after another. Then I found my husband at last. I was overjoyed and had my head in class thinking I was chosen by a good man too. However, there was an instant that snapped me back to reality. It was when I went to meet Daniel's mom, Sarah, for the first time. He was the only child raised by a single mother. I was told in advance by him that she loved him so much, but it turned out to be more than I had expected. I was brought to her house and was totally stunned by what she said even before I could finish introducing myself. You chose a woman who is nothing like me. She looked me up and down. She expected her son to marry a woman who looked just like her. I didn't think it was particularly odd. Some mothers tell their daughters to find a good husband like their father. What left a bad taste in my mouth was the way she looked at me and spoke to me. Her gaze and the tone of her voice made me think of a jealous girlfriend. Madison is a smart woman who can take a step back and look at things from a different perspective, just like you, Mom. Daniel tried to smooth things out, but his comment only added more discomfort to me. I didn't feel like he was praising me at all, even though that was supposed to be praise. In response to him, Oh, really? Sarah smiled and seemed to be pleased, which made me even more uncomfortable. After he explained that she and I were actually similar, her attitude toward me softened. I'm glad to hear that you're just like me. She gave me a satisfactory smile. I know people sometimes unconsciously choose a partner who looks like their parents. I have a friend just like that too, but Daniel sounded like he chose me because I resembled his mom. In truth, we were nothing like each other. I had never thought of myself as someone who could look at things from a different perspective. Instead, I was the type of person people around me normally commented to be quite direct. I couldn't fathom what made him say such a thing. He was probably just trying to make his mom happy. I questioned whether it was a good idea to marry a guy who had to kiss his mom's butt. Although such a doubt came up in my mind, I denied myself that it was nothing. It was my long-awaited marriage after all. As the wedding plan progressed, I began to forget the discomfort I had felt upon meeting Sarah. At that time, I was running at full power trying to grasp the happiness in front of me at any cost. Then again, a problem arose. Daniel mentioned that he would send half of his salary to Sarah after we got married. He was not well paid. We were just talking that we both had to work to make ends meet. I also wanted to save money for our baby in the future. Of course I didn't think he should neglect his mom or anything like that, but I told him it was too much for us to support her. She raised me single-handedly, and we'll be all alone at home. I think she deserves that much. He started weeping to my surprise. I was taken aback to see him react in such a way. I wondered if our marriage was going to be okay, but again, 
I tried to tell myself that he was a sensible person with strong ties with his mother, coming from a single parent family. He was right before our wedding, so I also had a strong feeling of responsibility to understand him. I honestly had no idea how he felt, but I assumed that was the way it was, and I needed to accept him as he was. That was exactly what people say love is blind. Looking back on it now, I realized how stupid I was. We talked about sending money on many occasions, and I told him not to do it every time. In the end, I was forced to agree to one third of his salary instead of half. Many things weren't settled, yet the wedding day was getting closer and closer. I did think about cancelling it at one point. I just couldn't make up my mind when I thought about the cancellation fee and settled on having more discussions after the wedding. There were also issues with the wedding planning. For some reason, Sarah kept interfering with us and told us what to wear and how the event should progress. Dania listened to her every word, so the fall event had changed a lot. My requests for this and that were mostly replaced by her taste. It's normal for parents to advise their children to make their wedding day better, she told me. Dania also said, A wedding my mom plans will be an amazing one. She's always right. He was adamant about it. My parents divorced when I was very young, and I didn't even remember my dad's face. On top of that, my mom, who raised me, passed away when I was in college. I had no one to talk to about whether what Sarah was doing was normal or not. Needless to say, we ended up with a wedding painted in her colors. I felt as if I was just a surrogate bride for her and Daniel to get married. I thought her meddling was just momentary. Once we got married, it was gradually going to disappear. It was better than having to deal with an evil mother-in-law. I was still somewhat optimistic at that time. Although I was young and not familiar with the world, I was too naive. Now, ten years later, I wish I had known more about the average family and had someone I could have consulted. My naivete was shattered once again about half a month after the wedding. You're going on your honeymoon at the end of next month, right? I'm going to miss you. I want to go to Hawaii too. The last part of what Sarah spoke sounded like a spoiled child, which grossed me out. Then Daniel smiled in response. Of course, mom. I'll pay for your trip. I had no choice but to protest. Wait a minute. What? Is that a no? Then Sarah pressured me. Sure, I can write, Madison. Well, it's our honeymoon, not a family trip. When I apologetically explained to her, she became furious. How dare you? Daniel is my son. I won't let you take him away from me just because you are married to him. What are you talking about, Mom? I'll never leave you. Even if I'm married, you're still my number one. With tears in her eyes, she hugged him tightly, and he gently patted the back of her head. I realized that my marriage was no longer possible at that point. The scene was nothing but unpleasant. I was filled with distaste. The sight of them made me sick. Fortunately, he said he would pay for her share of the honeymoon. I decided to go along with him and knock him down later. I apologized to both of them and settled the situation. 
I kept an eagle eye on them until the day of the honeymoon. When it finally arrived, Sarah was smiling ear to ear. Even though we hadn't arrived in Hawaii yet, she showed up at the airport wearing a hibiscus necklace. I'm so excited! I haven't taken a trip with you in years. You have a lot of fun, Mom. Daniel was also all smiles while talking to his mom. Of course, if Madison wasn't here, it would have been a nice family trip. Don't worry, she's here to help you. You can ask her to carry your luggage. On top of saying whatever they wanted to say about me, they were holding each other's hands for some reason. I didn't think anything of it anymore. I just kept them out of my sight as much as possible. It was definitely not good for my mental health. I had an important business to take care of. I'm sorry to interrupt your excitement. Sarah, do you know how he came up with the money for your trip? What's the matter, Madison, out of the blue? I questioned her with a serious face and she tensed up. What's going on, honey? Daniel was perplexed. Daniel, you're in debt and behind on all your shopping bills, aren't you? Both he and Sarah gasped at the same time in response to my question. I found a notice in the mailbox on my day off right after we got married. They said that you had neglected to pay the bills for several months. I flashed a few statements and demand letters in front of him who instantly became pale. I had a bad feeling about this, so I secretly looked into your bank account and bingo! I found the name and history of the money lender. He started trembling. Is it true, Daniel? Even Sarah turned pale and squeezed his arm. He remained silent. I looked at the credit card statements. It seems you've been buying a lot of brand name goods. Well, that's... His agitation was apparent at that point. It's strange, isn't it? You don't have any brand name goods, even though you have such a record. Um, well, it's a misunderstanding. At first, I thought you were giving them to Sarah as gifts, but I guess not. I looked into your phone too. It's locked. I wouldn't have figured it out if you hadn't said it to your birthday. You shouldn't have used such a no-brainer password. His face turned red when I pointed that out. You seem to be very fond of a former stripper named Foxy. And um, you've been paying her a lot of money even after she quit working. You're such a nice wallet for her. You even borrowed money to pay her. You seem to think she loves you. I quickly scattered printouts of her photo and the correspondences that I had found on his phone. He crawled onto the floor in a panic and gathered up those papers. Sarah yelled, You've fallen for such a flamboyant woman? She looked shocked just as a girlfriend would be. And you don't really care about your mom, do you? What? Her eyes almost popped out of her head. Stop it. Don't say any more. He shouted but didn't seem to realize that his reaction proved I was right more than anything else. He was digging his own grave. I found inexcusable evidence in his chat with Foxy. If it was for her, he didn't care about getting into debt. He was getting married soon and was having me keep working so he could give half of his salary to her, claiming it as an allowance to his mom. In the future, he will live with his mom and use her pension to pay off the debts. 
His mom loved him so much that he didn't realize that she was being deceived. He just needed to play the part, and everything would go as he planned. I honestly thought that he was a mummy's boy from the time I met Sarah, and recently I was convinced that he was. I finally understood after reading the chats. That guy used his mother as a tool to pay off his debts. He was a calm mummy's boy. He was attached to her only because he had a malicious plan to make the most use of her who spoiled him. It was an abominable action for a mother who raised her son single handedly. He was a cruel man who was not worthy of working the same ground as us. When I revealed everything, Oh, why did you? He started crying. Sarah kept muttering that it was a lie to herself with a completely white face. I felt a little sorry for her, but then I thought she raised a spoiled brat who thought he could use her in the worst case scenario. She was still giving him an allowance so that he would never leave her side. Even though he relied on her in an unbelievable way, she sold the seeds. She got what she deserved in a way. Well, I am seriously worried about my marriage with an unfaithful man who is likely to be on the financial blacklist in the future. I want a divorce. There was no response from either of them when I declared that. I was disappointed, so I pressed harder. By the way, I erased the chat history, but I sent Foxy a message this morning while you were sleeping. I wrote, I know I said a lot of things, but I love my mom and my wife. She replied that she didn't like you to begin with and that she didn't care. I thought it might hurt your feelings, so I erased it. I'm nice, ain't I? Right, honey? When I said that much, Daniel finally looked at me. Give, give me back my foxy. He started wailing. Seeing him like that, Sarah looked desperate as if she was dumped by him. I, on the other hand, couldn't hide my triumphant feeling and had a big smile on my face. Well, then you two go on a trip or do whatever. I'm going to charge you for my cancellation fee for this trip and alimony for adultery. I remembered that there was one more picture I had failed to produce and threw it to Daniel who was still kneeling on the floor. It was of him kissing Foxy on the cheek. Sarah burst into tears at the sight of it, and he struggled to hide it. A woman quietly crying, and a man crawling on the ground in despair in the lobby of the airport. The audience watched from afar. I wondered what they thought had happened between the two. My short marriage was over just like that. My divorce was finalized not too long after I received my alimony. What was a little surprising was that Daniel asked me not to tell anyone he was a mummy's boy. For that, he agreed to pay a little higher than the market rate alimony. Apparently, it was too shameful for him to be known as a mummy's boy even though it had been an act. I couldn't help but feel sorry for Sarah, but I guess it is what it is. She must have been totally knocked down by the truth. She no longer wanted to see his face and cut ties with her former beloved son. Once a woman has enough, it's fast to lose love. Daniel, on the other hand, who had unpaid debts and alimony payments moved out of the apartments we once lived in. He tried to get help from Foxy, but as expected, he was turned away. He was holed up in an employee apartment for a short time, and to get out of his debt ASAP, 
he took on a second job. He was fired when his main job found out about it. He was such a moron as the company regulation clearly banned the third job. Ten years have passed since then, and he's still living in a shabby apartment with a communal bathroom, paying off his debts with the money he gets from his part time jobs. As for me, I have remained single since then. Maybe because of what happened, I've lost my yearning for marriage. My romantic interest in men has completely faded away. If I were to choose between a man or a wagyu steak, I'd be more excited about a steak. I am more interested in eating than romancing, even though I get indigestion easily nowadays. To be honest, I've since realized that it's easier to be alone. I have been enjoying my single life. It seems to suit my personality, maybe because of the no stress. My skin has also become clearer. I resigned from the company I was working for back then. I have now opened a lymphatic massage spa, which was my dream. It's a secret that the alimony I received from Daniel was used as a down payment to open my business. I have a stable income and a good number of customers. Oh, and I adopted a kitten from my ex colleague before I left. She's a munchkin mix. I doted on her so much that she became a fat cat. She still looks adorable like that. But I think it's not good for her health. As a responsible owner, I reflect on this and I'm on a diet with my cat. I am single, but I am never really alone. My life is colorful, surrounded by customers and a cat every day.